Hey guys, in spite of the fact that two people didn't like my last unboxing video, you're getting another one. Both because I forgot to include some items in the last one, and I got some more stuff since then. So if you recall in the last unboxing video, I was talking about uh, some cathode ray tubes I had picked up, and a little project I want to use them in. Well, one of the pieces of the puzzle I was missing was some nice CRT sockets. So Tuber came through once again with some new old stock 14 pin CRT sockets that fit perfectly onto something like a 7JP4 used in the Motorola VT71 and in many other electrostatic TVs and uh, scope CRTs. So we're putting those to good use and one of the last things I need is a high voltage connector I want to use. And I did a little research and I found there's a company called Millen that makes high voltage connectors used in I think um, ham radio uh, transmitters and such. And uh, he's got one of those up for auction so I'll be bidding on that. Uh, in the meantime, what else have I got? Well, this is something I forgot to include in the last one. The guy in the Philco forum was talking about these and I hesitated at first because I don't really need them but after uh, reading his uh, enthusiastic reaction to getting some of these and how well they tested. I figured what the heck, I'll take the plunge as well. So what are these? These are eye tubes, New old stock eye tubes. But kind of curious because they're not American made, they're actually Japanese. So they're somewhat recent production. I'm not quite sure what year they're from, but they're the old style. These are compatible with 6E5s, I believe. So they got the old uh, base, like from the 30s. But these are not that old. I'm not sure when they're made. They're Toyos. Toyo 6E5, Japan. I haven't tested these yet, but he said they, they glow like, like you wouldn't believe. Super bright. So how about we pop one of these in a tube tester and give it a try. Now the reason I say I don't really need any is I think I only have one radio that uses a 6E5 and that would be a Stromberg Carlson share side. And I think my solar capacitor tester uh, uses one. But I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to get some new old stock tubes even if they are knockoff, uh, somewhat recent uh, reproductions. The price was reasonable. Alright, so 6E5, got set for I open, we press P4. Oh yeah, that is one bright eye tube. I've only, I, don't, I think every eye tube I've ever had has been used. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's nice to see how bright they can really be. Alright, other position I closed. We go 5, 4, 2, 3, 5, 4, 2, 3, and P4. Nice. Alright, so I figured if I'm going to order some, I might as well get four of them. They were 15 bucks a piece, plus shipping, and they come from Taiwan. But shipping wasn't too bad, and they got here pretty quickly. He has, or had, hundreds of them. I think he had something like 600 plus, and maybe a third of them had sold when I ordered these. I'll see if he's got any left, and if he does, I'll include a link in the description. Okay, what else? Well, this just showed up today, and it is not a spindle hub bearing assembly, I assure you. Or at least it better not be, because it's not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, so, pop this open. I think I know what this is. Alright, let's see. I just want to open this box. Okay. Voodoo Mike's Variety Store. Well, this would certainly fall into the category of a variety item. And when you see it, some of you, I think, are going to be a bit puzzled as to why the heck would I want to buy one of these. Because, if you watch some of my older videos, you know I've already got one, and it's in really, really nice condition. And this one is not so much. It's an antenna. And it's the type where it's like two tape measures inside, and you rotate this knob, and they get longer and shorter. And this one is pretty nasty. 
these cheap uh, faux metal brass things have all come detached and the bits torn off and the plastic's got some kind of nasty coating on it alright so why did I buy this I really don't intend to restore this and use it like this why I got it is I picked up oh I think it's a silver tone uh, Raytheon I don't remember but it's a 7 inch electrostatic TV one of those kinds that's portable and you carry by handle on top and it's vertically oriented and it's supposed to have a built in antenna like this there's a cup in the top uh, I did a video where I brought back some sets from Milwaukee including an RCA 621 and RCA 721 well, it was one of those it's in storage right now otherwise I'd show it to you uh, anyways that antenna was missing so I'm hoping that I can salvage the innards out of this one, which didn't really cost all that much, and transplant into that TV, because the antenna that was in there looks exactly like this. It's just instead of a box, uh, this mechanism fits inside the TV cabinet, and these come out the top. So, one of these days I'll get around to that set. Um, I'm kind of itching to get back to TVs. These radio projects are taking longer than I expected them to. I want to get that uh, Philco chair side done ASAP, and then I get the Philco 15 decks back, back up on the workbench and get that out of here. And I am on vacation, starting today. I'm officially on vacation for the first time in, like, well, years. Uh, so I hope to get a lot done over the next week and a half. Uh, in particular, I want to clean up all this stuff that's in here. These predictor heads, I still have to redo the, the end of one of these cables. I want to get both of these squared away and out of here and clear off this table and refinishing this table and fixing it up. It's a bit wobbly. Need some new wood supports underneath. That is my immediate project for next week. Uh, and once I got all this cleared out of the way, I want to start working on that national electrostatic TV, the TV7. And then if, I'm, uh, if, I, if, I, if that goes well and I get hooked on the electrostatic TVs again, I might pull out that TV I was just talking about. Alright, next up, let's see what's in here. Doesn't weigh much. Can't be a whole lot in here. Oh, uh, another reason I'm taking next week off is that that is the Arky Radio Fest. For sure I'll be going Friday, and I may go to the auction Thursday night, and uh, who knows, maybe even Saturday morning on the final day. Alright, congratulations on winning this eBay item. Well, alright. I was the only bidder, so it really wasn't all that much of a challenge, but what the heck, I'm glad I won Tape. Tissue paper. More tape. Very close. And Ta-da. So, I've seen these things for a long time. Various TV. I think every every serious TV TV collector's got at least one of these in their collection. And I was surprised when I went onto eBay and then actually finally looked for these. That there's quite a few of them out there. Most common is the brown, and then there's the white, and there's currently a blue one I think still on eBay. That was up to over fifty bucks last time I looked. Usually you get these used in this condition for uh, under ten bucks, but I guess I guess the blue must be super rare or something. This one's a bit grungy, but uh, I got it fairly inexpensively, so what the heck. So, it's a salt and pepper shaker. It looks like a vintage TV. I do not know when these are from. You rotate the, uh, the big knob down here, and they pop out. And you can uh, pop off these caps and fill them up with pepper and salt. I don't know if I ever will, but uh, I figured it was a, a cute little accessory to have. So, that's this one. But the thing I, I forgot in the last unboxing video was I actually got another one. And this one is uh, new in the box. 
I could not find any data on it anywhere though, so I don't know when it's from exactly. And this is the brown one. So exactly the same thing and just different colored plastic. And of course this one's in better condition. So I'm, I'm not really a completist collector, but I guess if I was, there's at least a blue one out there, and who knows, maybe there's a green and a red, and who knows what other colors, but I'm, I'm happy with just these two. And apparently, I've never seen anybody do this, but if you cut out a photo to that size, you can carefully push in on this clear plastic here, and it separates a little bit, and you can slide a photo in there. I'm a little bit nervous about doing that because when you push it, it feels like it's just gonna something's gonna break off inside. I would hate to ruin one of these. But as you can see, no date. I don't think these are super old, but maybe they're from the 50s or 60s. I don't know. Might be from the 80s or 90s. I, I just I just can't tell. I gotta figure they gotta be somewhat old because like, how many people would be interested in these these days if they were you know new production? But anyway. Kind of a, a neat little thing, and they certainly don't take up much space, nowhere near as much space as the real deal. Alright, just one item left. This comes courtesy of TV Dude one on Video Karma. He's another TV collector based out of Massachusetts. We've done a little bit of business in the past, and when I saw him list this on the antique radio form classifieds for a very reasonable price. I couldn't help myself but uh, go for it. What is it? Well, if you watch any of my videos over the past six months, you should recognize this. It's a Predicta chassis. In particular, it's a Predicta Holiday chassis. And what's curious about this is that I didn't really even realize when I, when I purchased it is that it's got the UHF tuner in it which I've never seen in person. So it's that copper box down there. And uh, I do have the knob that fits on this, which is a rather uh, large um, big plastic knob that sits out here with a vernier drive inside of it. Uh, I've certainly seen the service info about uh, how, where it would go and uh, the circuit modification used to uh, connect to it. And boy, it's tempting because uh, the sets with the UHF are, are rarer. It's tempting to take one of my predictors and install this and drill a hole in the cabinet and put the uh, UHF knob on the outside. I've seen a couple with UHF for sale over the years, but like I said, I've never seen one in person before. But the real reason I bought this is just for spare parts. Uh, I'm, I'm no doubt we'll run into more problems because I'm not done with the predictive projects yet. I still have a couple 17s to go. I still have a blonde tandem I haven't touched yet. I still have a little bit more work to do on my uh, holiday set. It's not working quite as well as I'd like it to, so there will be more predictive content coming in the future. Here's a closer look at it out of the box. I figured if nothing else, it's nice to have all these controls, and who knows, this power switch may even still be good. And I don't know what the history is behind this. This board looks to be 100% original parts, but somebody did unwrap the wires like they were starting to work on it. And, uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, flyback looks pretty pristine, about as good as I've ever seen a predictive flyback look. So it's nice to have a spare. And uh, it's good underneath. Now, in addition to this, TV Dude 1 and I have been working on a much bigger deal. I posted a uh, bucket list, a wish list, if you will, on Video Camera a while ago. Somebody started a topic about, you know, list your. Uh, the sets you hope to someday own before you die. So, like the other guys, I posted my bucket list too, and 
that was, I don't know, three years ago. And I never expected that I am one set shy of completing my bucket list. So what was on there? Oh, like the RCA 621 TS, the Motorola VT105. Which, definitely very collectible and somewhat rare, but they're around. They're around. The Dumont Clifton is the one I never, ever expected to ever own, let alone ever see one. But, yeah, I got one of those. Which left just one set. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's not in my possession yet. It's still in Massachusetts. And I don't know when or if it's ever going to get here. But I did pay for it, so I hope it does one of these days. And, hey, how about that? The thermistor fell out. I wonder if that's all that was wrong with this set when it was retired. Good old thermistor falls out. These get hot. Solder joints eventually fail and the, that disc just falls right out of the set. That or this fails, the filament dropper. Otherwise, yeah, this set is 100, or this chassis is 100% original. Nothing has been replaced on this. It almost seems like a shame to part it out now. Hell, maybe I should restore this and put it on my holiday set. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's just the reality of this hobby. I got about a dozen chassis up in the attic. There are more chassis than there are good hat and cabinets and good pitcher tubes, and that's just the way it goes. So, back to this tuner. This has got to be a 6AF4 or 3AF4 or something on this. Or a 2AF4, yeah. That was the... That's well, the original Filco tube, too. That was the first UHF tube used in all the tuners. This is the, the, the uh, AF4 first tube that could handle those super high uh, microwave, or, well, U, you know, UHF frequencies up to uh, about 800 megahertz, I believe. So I think this would just act as an oscillator mixer and down convert it, and then it may have gone into this tuner or maybe directly to the IF. But usually we do a double conversion. I don't, I don't think it could go directly from like 6 to 800 megahertz right down to the 44 megahertz IF in one shot. But, uh, so there it is. Oh, and check this out without the vernier drive on here. UHF. Just rotates. That's it. That goes all the way from channel uh, 14 to 83, just like that. So without that knob with like the uh, 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 reduction ratio, it would be impossible to tune any station in. You don't even get like a, a 180 degree rotation. Or just about 180. So that would be way, way, way too coarse to ever tune in and tune in a station accurately. All right, well, that is going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this latest unboxing video.